I wanted to talk about your respective careers. I mean, uh, Robert, aye, aye, aye. Robert, I mean. What have you heard? Uh, oh. <laughs> Richard Pryor grew up in a whorehouse, and you grew up in the Bronx with plastic slipcovers. And just to create a juxtaposition. Don't put your head on the furniture. No, it wasn't the slipcovers. <laughs> that was my, my mother's mother fucking had mantra. plastic on the rug. <laughs> and so I wouldn't get one down. One time I went to some kid's house, and he had regular rug. I thought they were poor people, and it wore through to the fuzz. <laughs> you know, like the, the sheen had been lost. <laughs> I never heard that before. You're funny. Well, I to You're ask, very funny, Robert. You grew up with the you grew, <laughs> you grew up with the influence of the older comedians and the Catskills. What did you learn from the old guard, and what did you deliberately take, and then what did you not take, and not build on? Who are you, you asking? You, I'm asking you. You were you, the you, you, were, Jew. you were the bridge. I'm a little older than him. I, um, I'll say only a few years, <laughs> five years. Old. Yes, Rabbi. Um, I love the mastery. This is something we haven't discussed, which Richard also uh, discusses in his book. Um, there's a wonderful quote from Charlie Groden that stand-up comedians are the what? The gladiators of show business? Warriors. Something like that. Warriors. Warriors. Like. You know, I remember once sharing a limousine uh, at the Tony Awards when I would... Some uh, Mar- warrior, a limousine. Ma- Meryl <laughs> Streep. And she said, how do you do it? You know, you know, script, you're in front of a, you know, an audience. I, I, I uh, once wrote a forward to some book and compared it to uh, bullfighting, that you're kind of alone. Uh, thankfully, after all these years, it's less adversarial with the huh. audience. In fact, almost not adversarial. There's a lot of affection over the spotlights. But the phenomenon of someone standing in one with the conceit to say that I'm going to make you laugh, that's my job here, and it's going to be a session making you laugh, is a very interesting phenomenon. How are you making out with that? And <laughs> it, has, it has roots in music hall, of course, but it's basically a post-World War II phenomenon, and it is something which had, I think that one of your things your book points out is how the, the number of people wanted to do this and the number of people who have done it successfully who has exploded uh, geometrically. I did a show for the Cablevision uh, on the Metro Channel a few years ago. Uh, I, had 50, I, I showcased 52 comedians. And, and most of them were not brilliant, but they all made strangers laugh in a time and place of someone else's choosing for the money, you know, uh, to be a practitioner of that. And also, I think it's still a high calling. It makes people feel good. So, uh, um, you know, his book talks about trendsetters, people that took this profession and took it to new dimensions. What was your question? But you know what? Let me. <laughs> I want to. Uh, Robert's not explaining it very well. You, you, what you did? I'm shocked. He took the old style. He he grew up with those Borscht Belt. Who are we he, talking he about? Mr. Robert. Klein oh, go ahead. I'm here. sorry. And he he, but he added something new. He was at Second City for a year. And he took that improv style, and he, he, he combined it in this kind of new kind of uh, stand-up comedy that combined jokes with acting and characters and impressions and in this kind of really fluid way. He knew where the jokes came. He knew what lines, to, you know, what words to emphasize. And he just, he, it was something totally sort of fresh that all the younger guys, I think, picked up on. And, and so that's why I felt Robert guys. was so influential. I remember seeing Robert on The Tonight Show... And did you have a corduroy suit? Probably. And no, what what I thought was when you when they introduced you, here's a like a former school teacher, and you came out, and it was it was uh, it was akin to uh, when Lenny stopped wearing suits. In other words, you you started you didn't make you didn't have a radical change in in, in a, after a few years. You came out as this. You dared be smart. You, you know, no one ever heard of, well, a teacher, a stand-up comic. And I think that you, you had this very warm, fresh, really funny take on things that, as you said, I mean, I don't want to name anyone, but there's a lot of big comedians who owe their style to Robert, and to this day, there are elements of that, and uh, he's one of the biggest, biggest influences. Well, you know about my hair.